will also be assisting in guiding proceedings this morning. May I at this time most respectfully uh, recognize the presence of the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Vice Marshal Oladayo Amao, Distinguished Flying Star. You're welcome, sir. May I request a round of applause for the Chief of the Air Staff. The proceedings uh, of today commence with the movement of the remains of our retired former Chief of the Air Staff from the morgue to his uh, await housing estate home to the Mbongkwarawa and uh, here at the venue any moment from now the Paul Bearers will be marching the remains of Air Marshal Nsikak Isianabasi Edward to the stand for the commencement of formal proceedings. The Paul Bearer, sir. May I request we please rise in reverence to our departed elder. Thank you. Please, gentlemen of the press, thank you very much for the very beautiful work you're doing. We need to inform you beforehand that this is an event which, of course, is a religious event interspersed with the military ceremony. It is important that you do not interfere with the ceremony in the course of doing the very commendable work you're doing. Thank you. As the pallbearers recover, may I please request we take our seats. 
Thank you. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, now that the motto remains of the departed former chief of the SSF have been placed here and the um, poor bearers have um, retired, at least for now, we're going to invite the Chairman of Conference of the United Evangelical Church, the Reverend Dr. Ebogiba, to please take over proceedings from here. Thank you. To God alone be all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in, in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. I, Reverend Samuel Ebukiba, Chairman of Conference, United Evangelical Church, now has a singular honor and the privilege on behalf of United Evangelical Church and all of us here gather to receive the remains of our late Chairman of Board of Registered Trustees, Elder A. Marshall Nsikak Edward, retired for the funeral service here on this ground to the glory of God in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This morning, we're on a sad note at this occasion because one of us, the Chairman Board of Trustees of the United Evangelical Church, has departed to be with his Lord. This morning, we'd like to begin this service as we call on the choir to give us an introit. Can we please rise for the intro? It? Minister, please, to step forward for the call to worship as we remain standing.
So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So teach us to number our days that we may gain Remember, only remember, only remember by what we have done. Oh, we'll pass from the dead and toil. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. The only God who lives forever, Jehovah is your name. You know the end from the beginning, just as you know the beginning from the end. Forever you remain the only true God. We say, Hallowed be your name. Amen. We bless your holy name, O Lord. For the life of your servants, your son, let Elder A. Marshall see Cairo. That while he was on earth, you, the God of heaven, granted him the grace to know you and to serve you. At your own appointed time, you call him out to come and rest in the Lord. And today we are gathered for this funeral service. Oh God, we remember your word that says that. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Therefore, Lord, we dedicate this place unto you. As we gather here in your name, move in the midst of your people. Take the glory as God. Amen. Let every power that may want to rise up in this arena, contrary to your will, be subdued. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We cover this ground with the blood of Jesus. Everything that we will do in this place, Lord, may we be guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Triune God, have your right of way. Blessed be your name. Amen. As we declare this funeral service of our departed father, our departed colleague, a gallant soldier of the Lord, let Elder A. Marshall C. Kidwalk retired. Open in the name of God the Father. And of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can we celebrate God more with our hands together, please? Please, we'll take item five as number four and take number four as five. Let's take the congressional hymn. Number 163, through the love of God our Savior, all will be well. Kima niya yete, mpoye fon. Page six of your program, please, if, if you have the copy. It's, it's a very known song, so you can sing or hymn or just follow us now. Thank you very much. Please be here. Shall we rise and sing? You might see cricket. He is 
As we celebrate this great God, praise and worship, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we clap our hands to Jesus? And praise Can we just will last celebrate? About 10 minutes. Can we just minutes. celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm more. Among Jesus, so so no equal. I man up more. Among Jesus, so so no equal. Let's sing together. I man up more. Come on. Come on. Come on. So song of he wear I for man of more among Jesus So song of he wear that sing I for man of more among Jesus So song
Jesus by clapping our hands. Hallelujah. You can shout if you can. Hallelujah. Let's just use this moment and just give him glory. glory Let's to wave God. your hands to him. Glory to God. Just wave your hands to him. Lord of Lords, yes, ancient of days. Praise be the name of the Lord. Oh, yeah. You got times and seasons in your hand. Sing together. You are God from the beginning to the end. There's no place. of the Lord glory to God please this is church this is church and in church we rejoice with the Lord we rejoice for what God has done we exalt his name we praise him so please let's forget about everything else and begin to join with the church to lift the name of God high and high and high praise be the name of the Lord hallelujah, hallelujah. amen Please, we'll go to the next item on the program. Please be seated. God bless you. Can we invite the General Secretary of United Evangelical Church, founded as Kwaiba Church, Reverend Udo Alex Shibu, to step forward for the Bible reading, taken from Acts chapter 13, verse 22 to verse 41. Acts chapter 13, verse 22 to 41. General Secretary, please step forward. Our Bible reading this morning will be taken from House of Apostles, chapter 13, verses 22 to 31. To 41. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave their testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed, that God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Jesus. When John first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to lose, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they, are, for they that dwell at Jerusalem, and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophet, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. 
And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead. And he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you good glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God has fulfilled the same unto, his, unto their children, in that he had raised up Jesus again. As it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he said also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thy holy one to see corruption. For David, after he has served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was led unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the Lord of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, you despise us, and wonder and perish, for I walk a walk in your days, a walk which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. May God bless his reading in our hearts, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are now at item number seven, which has to do with the song ministrations. And I want to invite in this order, United Evangelical Church National Choir will take the lead. Thereafter, the Central Choir of Ikemeset Area Conference will follow. So please, those choir groups should take just three minutes. Three minutes. God bless them.
Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, there is a choir which will present maybe after now, the Air Force Comprehensive Secondary School Choir. I don't know if they are here. Um, the Air Marshal, the late Air Marshal, was instrumental to the founding of that, that school. So if they're here, we'll give them time later on the program to say one or render a, a piece to the glory of God and in the honor of the departed. Right now, we like to get into the word and we like to introduce and welcome Group Captain Bassey, who will introduce the speaker. Uh, before then, please, um, if you have condolences, please register them with um, Reverend Emma Ebong. He's seated up here. Maybe he'll go down a little bit to get your condolence messages. We may not read any condolence message except for particular ones. So please, bear that in mind. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Aquaibum State, may I crave your indulgence to dwell on existing protocol. The man of God ordained to bring the message on this very solemn ceremony is no other than Group Captain Reverend Dr. Dogo Bari Ghani, who is the Director Chaplaincy Protestant Nigerian Air Force. May I now invite Reverend Group Captain Ghani for the message. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I count it a great privilege and honor to be part of this great occasion, as solemn as it is. At the same time, we have every reason to appreciate the Lord. The government and people of Akwaibom State, the deputy governor, The Chief of the Air Staff, the Nigerian Air Force family, the Chairman, United Evangelical Church, and all the clergy, various groups that have gathered here this morning to celebrate a life that God himself has used in the sand of the earth. I bring you greetings in Jesus' name. I stand even on behalf of the chaplaincy in Nigerian Air Force and the entire religious specialty in the Air Force to appreciate God for what he had done through the life of this great man lying instead today. Through his wisdom and commitment to the Lord, he initiates the establishment of the religious department in the Nigerian Air Force. And as such, we hold him with great honor and we respect him. I want to say to the Lord, we are grateful. And indeed, some of us, particularly myself, we are one of the pioneers of commissioning of chaplaincy in the Nigerian Air Force. So I count it a privilege to partake in the burial of my father. I was with a friend yesterday and I told him three people I felt I'm honored to partake in their burial. My grandfather, my father, and Air Marshal Edward. Because they are people that God used to make some of us where we are. And I say to the Lord, I count it a great honor. Indeed, the Lord is faithful. Shall we bow our head in prayers? Father in heaven, we thank you this morning. 
we magnify it and glorify your holy name. That of a truth there is none like you. Thank you, Rock of Ages, for thou sayest that every man's days are a mark from heaven. And when the days are fulfilled, are over, we can never out with an inch. Father, we've gathered here this morning to celebrate your faithfulness in the life of your servant, whom you have used during his stay on earth, until it pleases you to grant him eternal rest. Ancient of days, lift up your name above all, and may we behold your glory even in this gathering. Thank you, gracious and eternal Father. Grant us the comfort that no man can give. Give us the peace that no man can give. Give us the strength that no man can give. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty and holy name we've prayed. And amen. I will take a reading from the passage we read earlier. Acts chapter number 13. For time constraint, I'm not going back to all the passages. But I will take only verse number 36 of Acts chapter number 13. Verse 36 says, For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid in his fathers, with his fathers and saw corruption. Verse 37 I add, but he whom God raised, did, raised up did not see corruption. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. I titled the short homily this morning as Serving God's Purpose. Everyone have a purpose for what you do. Every one of us here have one profession or the other. Every one of us here have one, one thing or the other that we do in life. Everything that a man does in life have a reason. The reason for which you do what you do determines how you are committed to it. The reason why you do what you do is that motivation that push you to commit yourself into doing it. Brethren, Purpose is the goal for which you act and, and react. Purpose is the reason why you behave the way you behave. I saw purpose as the reason for which something is done or created for which is being created. A person solve of reserve, resolve for determination. I describe purpose as that which a man desired and, have the, and the goal of one's action. What he moves, what moves him towards an action. No wonder, Isaiah chapter number 43 verse 7, the Lord says, I created you for my glory. That is the purpose for which God created you and I. The passage we read from Acts chapter number 13, Paul, in presenting the gospel message to the Jews, took a background history of the Jewish life from the time of God's promise to the children of Israel in the Old Testament and understanding the position of David in history. Paul drew their attention after analyzing the history of the Old Testament to the New Testament from John the Baptist, he now said that David, a very great revered man in Israel, till today when you go to Jerusalem, if there is any king in Israel that the children of Israel respect till tomorrow is the grave of David. Why? Because as far as the Jewish are concerned, the David is the greatest king that ever lived. And as such, till today, they refer his grace. And Paul ended in that verse 36 by saying, David, serve the purpose. Some version says the will of God in his generation. And I stand here this morning to say, brethren, 
What is the purpose of God you are serving? Even as we are seated here this morning, I don't know what you are living for, but this is what the Bible tells me, that David the great man served the purpose of God in his generation. And then he fell asleep. Few things I took from that, the history of David, that Paul mentioned, that indeed, David served. And I said, are we serving? He said, David served. David served. Oh, I said, are we serving? Oh, we demand to be served. Jesus speaking to the disciples. In John chapter 13, verse 5, he took a bowl and put water and washed the disciples' feet. I'm going back and called them and said, have you seen what I have done? If I, as your master, have served, that is what I expect of you to do. And I say, men and women that are gathered here this morning, are we serving or we are demanding to be served? Are we serving? The clergy, are we serving? Women, are we serving? Politicians, are we serving? The military, are we serving? Or we demand to be served? Jesus said, we are, to be, we are to serve. That is the mark of a child of God. He served in his generation. That is another thing. I said, every one of us have a generation to serve. You have a limited time to serve. That is why we've gathered here this morning. Because our daddy, our brother, an elder, a general has served his time. Brethren, whether you like it or not, all of us have time to serve. You have your generation to serve. Are we serving our generation? Or do you demand the generation to serve us? After serving his generation... Paul says, David fell asleep. Our daddy has fallen asleep. The temporal sleep. Because the scripture tells me in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18, that we should not mourn those who have fallen asleep as those who do not have faith or hope. Because we know that our brethren that have fallen asleep, they'll wake up tomorrow. Brethren, Understand that each and every one of us have time to live, and the time will come that we'll fall asleep. And when you fall asleep, all about you is gone. Are we ready? Are we ready? Do you and I know that one day you will fall asleep? And of course, he was buried. He was buried. Anybody, nobody, whether no matter how highly placed you are, no matter how highly placed you are. One day you are going down the grave. That is the fact about life. No matter how your life is, one day you are going back to sleep. Your body will be going back to the grave. Nobody is buried in the sky. No one is buried in the heavens. No one is buried in the sea. Of course, even in the sea, it's on the earth. And then the last thing that I took there, that... Paul mentioned about the history of David is that his body decayed. Oh, brethren, no matter how we love our daddy, no matter how we love the general, no matter how we cherish him, this body is going to decay. Whatever you think you are, no matter how handsome, how beautiful, how you put every cosmetics, one thing for sure is that this body must decay. Brethren, I have the privilege of understanding some cosmetics that women are making. And I understand that some cosmetics cost hundreds of thousands upon this flesh that one day it will decay. And I say, do you know that your body one day it will decay? Do you know that one day your body will go away? Do you know that one day your body will be no more? Brethren, we are in a generation that people are so selfish, so mindless, wickedness all over. Oh, and I said, do, are we ready? Are we aware that one day we shall pass on, whether great or small? 
two days ago, we buried some wonderful, young, charming, promising officers and men of Nigerian Air Force that God has called them. They didn't have the privilege to live like our daddy. And yet God called them. No matter how we love them, we can't live with the body because the body must go. And I said this morning, even as we gather here to celebrate this man, a man that I've lived a mark in the sands of the shore, a man that I've served his fatherland, a man that I've served his people, a man that never hide his faith. I count Air Marshal Edward as one of the outstanding people that even in the service, within the service and outside the service, he never hide the fact that he is a believer. He never re retrieved. He took the bold step in the year 1998 to commission chaplains against all odds because he felt that faith needs to be part of the military. Brethren, what is the purpose for which you are living? What is the purpose for which you are living? Are we living for ourselves? Are we living for ourselves? Selfishness and self-centeredness has become the bane of our society today. Pride and arrogance have become the bane of our society today. Politicians, are we serving the purpose of God? Oh, when we are looking for vote, we go to every nook and cranny. But after getting the vote, where are we? Clergy, are we serving the purpose of God even in the church? God have mercy on us. That politics and pride has weighed the church down these days. Brethren, are we ready to serve the purpose of God? This is the reason why you and I are living. David, as a man, God chose to serve his purpose. He never relented at any point in time. David had the heart for God. David was humble. David was righteous. And that's why even when he fell, he never relented in repenting. Some of us, pride will keep us because we cannot repent. In spite of all the wickedness we are doing. Brethren, remember, if you are only living for this world, Paul says, you and I are the most to be pitied. If only that you and I are living in this world is to gather the material things of this world. Brethren, you, have the most, you are the most pitied person. The Bible says, what will it profit a man? If you gain the whole world, but loses your soul, whatever you have, remember that it's just a matter of time. King Herod, in the book of Acts, when he spoke, and everybody said, wow, this is the voice of a God. Before you know it, he was struck down. And the scripture says, my God ate his body. The Bible says, pride goes before a fall. Do you know that you have a limit? Are you serving the purpose of God? The man that serves the purpose of God is the man that touches the life of many. I'm sure if not for COVID today, this, this ground wouldn't have been enough for people that would be here. Are you serving the purpose of God? Are you serving the purpose of God? Men and women seated. Clergy that were seated. The church has become a political ground. May God have mercy on us. God is looking for men and women that will serve his purpose. Air Marshal Edward has served. No wonder after retirement, he just went back and relaxed. What a great man. What a great man. What a great man. At your own time, will it be said that you serve the purpose of God? Nigeria is in need of people that will serve the purpose of God. The armed forces are looking for men that will serve the purpose of God. The church is looking for men that will serve the purpose of God. Politics is looking for men that will serve the purpose of God. Are we serving the purpose of God? One day, you and I shall be no more. What will be said of you? Shall we pray? Are you serving the purpose of God? Or you are serving your belly? You are serving your fame. You are serving money. You are serving women. 
you are serving men. You are serving status. Father, we thank you. Have your way in our lives today. May we serve your purpose. In Jesus' name. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that sermon, not very long, but very impactful and very thought-provoking. And we want to thank the Director of Chaplain Services, Protestant of the Nigerian Air Force, for that brief but very powerful sermon. While that sermon was going on, we're joined on this occasion by His Excellency, the Governor of Akwaibum State, our number one citizen, Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Udum Imano, Governor of Akwaibum State. You're welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you. I'd like to continue the program as we take testimonies. Please, each of the persons that will come for the testimony shall take two minutes. Two minutes, please. We'll begin with the son, and then we'll ask the family to stand by. The son will give a testimony. The family, please stand back. We'll have the village, after the village, Mbom Barawa Ibibio will come in before the local church, the superintendency, stroke the area, the BOT, and the national office. Please, we are inviting the son now. Family that will be speaking, please, to follow suit. As it's coming, please let the next person stand by. Thank you. The late Elder A. Marshall Zika Edward was a very humble man, a man that God used to achieve his purposes. Even as the preacher said, he lived a good life, he fulfilled purpose. Look all around you, Aquaibom State, Ibez Sultan, some of these things, he was part and parcel, and mostly the tip of the arrow that brought these things to fusion. He taught us to live the excellent life, to always want to better our best. He taught us to look unto Christ for perfection, that our perfect, our perfect example was not even him, but Christ. He was a humble man, a gallant soldier. He fought for his community. He fought for his people. He fought for his country. And most importantly, he was, a, he was at the forefront of the propagation of the gospel, a fought in the army of Christ. Thank you. While the family member comes up, please, we would like to invite the village. Praise the Lord. That man that is lying there is no more called by name. He 
he was my brother till 6 July, 6 January 2001. We, we miss him. He was so close to me. But I really know today when it was in mortuary, when they were started to, 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 to dress him, that is no more Zika Hydro, my brother that I knew. My brother was a brave soldier. He was an argumentator. He was a helper. But I know when there was no movement, no life in him again, then I believe that death is real. As the son said, and the preacher, I'm not praising because he was my brother. He touched so many lives. As his life there is no more. We were so close. When my father and my mother died, I did not feel. Even in December, when we buried my senior sister, I did not feel so much. But that man, I feel. I say, let your soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. Please, can we have a representative from the village as we also ask Bong Bawai Bibiu to please stand by. A representative of the village, please. We'd like these persons to please move closer to the microphone. Thank you. Please, can we invite Mbom Parawaibu, please? I've not seen the village representative. We have to move on. Mbom Parawaibu, please. Thank you. You have said you are afraid of walking Jesus Christ. Amen. I am made of Parawa Obong Patrick Edwin Udofia, International President, Mbong Parawa Ibibio. Ndami, Kiwon Parawa, Rita Ekombo, Ke Grand Petron Nene Naraku, Ado Tam Poyo, Uba Udum, Ampama Ibonyan. Bye bye, you know, about a million. See, I never seen young and you never seen one million could send a ma bob. Immediately, I will get a week and make it down a combo and paraway with you without a dimension. I hear bro unity schools, key do run and the tall. I quite will make a game with Uber or more senator. I come by Kamba Afoka Kalaba. Secretary and Mugoke Kalaba along the highway, Uberomos and Yinon Yinisongo. Abokpa Secretariat, 
Anombugo mpara wa ibibi o. Ki so nyi ni pon oyin ero. Ina o government ni ki bobu fa iba ga do yen so so no bok. Iba na ri tan ko stere me kwa ibo m state. A free way contribute bre 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 bre. But I recognize Ronaldo. And you get the Ronaldo. I get a me too for a moment. I travel a lot of Asen in front of me in a state. And you know what I say if I'm in. You better mention who song up by song. I go to your baby Ruda. I pay for the more good. Uda better in front of me Bob. You better me come of us. Can say that I'm saying I'm in the come of us. You have a several come in Jesus Christ. A song at eighty. Mbaku Bono for Obasi. Young maybe in one minute, you wave for your bye bye with Mbogo Antem. Abasi, Redem, say to one so Come I come back, Parawa Nyen, His Excellency, Parawa Udom, Gabriel Emmanuel. It is our studio. We know we came and I'm with you for a complete Kenyan Jesus Christ. Ngedi Imi, the Vice President of Parawa James said that you are the Secretary General of Parawa Fioridia Umo. You are fit men marking. It is in the Gagi Bangi and Miko no Fred Wendim. Again, I'm bored on COVID-19. I'm just as a widi. But so so, but I want you so so. Tom Sanga, Sanga Keba, Ke Yobong, to two seno koro wogen yung Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. I'd like to invite the village, please. The village representative is here now. Immediately after that, you will see Mbak Ikbe. Please, the representative of the local church to draw close to the microphone. Me come of Rewu, Sibagi Tiemi, Janai Wadi, Wanayan, Kedibu, Etenian, E. Marshal, and Sikaga, who are retired. Ntangiko, K. Or maybe I should speak in English. I am here to represent. The village of Mbakek Bay. I want to tell you something simple about A. Marshal Edward. He was at the forefront of anything that was developmental in the village of Mbakek Bay. I tell you from spiritual, the church, churches he built, the factories, he educated people from any family. He, he consecrated people into government. He, he did just about anything for the village because he had the love of his people at heart. He, today, as he is no more, we feel as if it is an end of an era. So we, we don't know what, um, what exactly we're going to do without him because he was such a colossal mm -hmm. figure. We thank God that um, he took him at this time because God, God understands. Thank you for coming out. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much. United Evangelical Church, Mbaikbe. Shortly after that, we'll take a testimony from the superintendency slash the area conference. You can see it. Superintendency area conference. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, for they not only rest from their labor, their good works will follow after them. I am Elder Barista Ubon Udo, the chairman of the church committee, United Evangelical Church, Mbaraipe. Today we are mourning the sad exit of our advisor, of our role model, and our mentor, the person whose love for God has remained an eternal challenge to those of us who are the younger generation of Christians and adherents of the United Evangelical Church. He has taught us so many lessons that will remain eternally memorable. 
his generosity when it comes to donations towards church evangelism, church planting, and expansion has remained quite exemplary. And we are very happy. We had the privilege of understanding him, of leaning under him. Now that he has gone, we just have one single prayer to advance, that God in his infinite mercies will grant us the privilege of having another dependable pillar that will serve as a source of strength, a source of encouragement, and a source of spiritual rejuvenation to us, the younger generation. To, on behalf of the church and the entire faithfuls of United Evangelical Church, I take a bow and say to our dear BOT chairman, goodbye till we see at the resurrection morning. Thank you and God bless. Praise the name of the Lord. I stand here on a dual capacity to testify about our father, let Elder Emma Shal Sikairok, as a superintendent and as a chairman of EKMS Area Conference, which Sikairok belongs. It was through his effort that EKMS Superintendency was founded in 2005. He was very supportive to the world mission and evangelism, and because of that, the church helped to grow. Last year, we went together to a small church that was founded in 2018 with only two members, a wife and a husband. And when I told him about the, the increase of the church, that in 2019, the church was increased from, uh, from 2 to 36 because of regular evangelism. He said, my chairman, I will come and worship there. On the 8th, December 2019, we went together. He saw the church. He was impressed and told me that the church must surely have a place of worship. Last yeah, on 23rd December, agreement for two plots of land, both for Ikoro Kubo and Afa Uroyup, were presented to me. But unfortunately, after that two years or two weeks, the Lord called him out. He had promised me that at all costs, must make sure that the church will be built for those two young churches. Coming back to the area conference, when he came and said, area conference was created in 2019 as a autonomous area conference and was named after his own superintendency, he came and said, meaning oneness and steadfastness. The man donated a plot of land made short five thousand something square meter for the building of the secretariat for EKMC area conference and promised me that the area the land would be developed and said that the year 2020 that has passed that the building will be set up for administrative block so unfortunately Couple with the outbreak of the COVID-19, coupled with his ill health, the promise was unfulfilled. Now, I am standing here that the man has had concern about the building of the young church and also developing the area conference. I'm appealing to the area, appealing to the state, appealing to the Air Force and the family that one imperfecting administrative block should be set up there as a memorial for the great man of God. 
This is my request. That it is to the glory of God. May the will of God be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please may we invite on behalf of the Board of Trustees, Elder Barrister Joe Abraham to speak. To err on the side of caution, I would like to adopt the already well-established uh, profile of, of protocol here this morning, except that I would want to formally appreciate the presence of the governor of the state. As members of the Board of Trustees, we rise in unison this morning with a sense of loss, a sense of agony, sense of mental anguish and disbelief as we stand here to give a testimony in respect of our departed elder, indeed an elder statesman, Air Marshal Nsikak Edward, who was the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the United Evangelical Church. Air Marshal Nusikak Edok was a general, both in his chosen career, where he was first among equals, and where he was also first in distinction in all ramifications. And he was a general, a true general in God's army. He was a consumer gentleman, a military icon, a trailblazer, and first among equals. He was a man of great repute, who made monumental strides on the stands of time and history. His impeccable lifestyle and character in the service of God's vineyard will remain on the kind pages of history. He lived a good life and ran a good race on earth. He was a pillar of faith, an ardent follower of Christ. He was a stabilizing factor in times of crisis in the church. His unfailing strength and eloquent speech, though now silenced by this monster called death, will live on. He was a hardworking, fearless, and courageous man with an amazing personality and strong ethics. As it was Queen Elizabeth II who said, grief is the price we pay for love, and that is why we are here today. It is a truism that good men must die, but death cannot kill their name. General will remain evergreen in the hearts of the members of the Board of Trustees, the Church, the Evangelical Church, United Evangelical Church in general, and everyone who has had the privilege and the fortune of crossing this way. We know that one day, death, this monstrous apparition, shall be swallowed up in death. Death's penchant for wickedness shall come to a shattering end. Then we shall turn death and say, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Praise ye the Lord. The man who has just spoken to us is a senior advocate of Nigeria, the former Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in Kogi State. Please, can we appreciate him again? No other man is able to take this other cap from the national office. Let me crave our indulgence to invite to the microphone our distinguished father, the number one leader amongst us, the chairman of the United Evangelical Church, Reverend Dr. S.U. Eboiba, to please speak. I think the church can appreciate him the more than what we're doing. Only remember, only remember, only remember by what 
we have done Though we will pass from the earth And it toiling man is gone, the man who supported the church, even United Evangelical Church, he stood by, he stood with the church, may the name of the Lord be glorified. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, they will rest from their labor, for their deed follow them. It was with a sense of loss and grief that I, on behalf of United Evangelical Church Worldwide, received the news of the glorious home call of your husband, father, grandfather, uncle, and the chairman of Board of Registered Trustees of our dear church, United Evangelical Church, let Elder A. Marshall and seek out work retired. As a humble and a human being, I felt that he still had a lot to contribute to the growth and expansion of the church. But I do submit to the perfect will of God. I thank God for the life of our led Board of Trustees Chairman. He lived a fulfilled life, having attained enviable heights in the military, government, business, and the church he will be greatly missed by all of us. His efforts at bringing reconciliation to the church can never be forgotten. For he sacrificed his life and means enduring periods in the course of his duties for and in the church. He was a philanthropist as he awarded scholarship to many children of the less privileged both within United Evangelical Church and outside to study in higher institutions. He was a lover of the servants of God. Obviously, his good deeds have followed him. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, the National Standing Committee, and all members of United Evangelical Church worldwide, I wish to extend our heartfelt condolences and prayers to the wife children, grandchildren, and a host of relations. I commit all of you and the entire United Evangelical Church into the hands of God as we celebrate the life of this great general, a great elder of United Evangelical Church. I enjoin you to strengthen your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, who has assured all believers thus, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. John chapter 11, verse 25. In him alone is life. For in him all will be made alive. So that at the appointed time, when the trumpet call of God sounds, all believers will be with him. I pray for your comfort protection and provision from the Father of compassion and the God of all comforts and mercies. Surely, he will give you the needed succor to bear the effects of this suppression till we meet at the Lord's feet. I remain Reverend Dr. Samuel Deme Ebukiba, Chairman of Conference United Evangelical Church Worldwide, on behalf of all members all officers, all leaders of United Evangelical Church. May the name of the Lord alone be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, we are at item number 10, the condolence messages. 
the condolence messages are on the program from page number 54 to page 72. For and the want of it, for time and the want of it, we will only ask these few people to please go to the family and present their messages. Okay, please, um, if you have a condolence, visit or condolence message to give to the family, please, at your convenience, walk up to the family and um, submit your condolence messages. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, in continuation with uh, today's solemn ceremony we shall take the next item on the program which is the reading of biography and citation of late elder air marshal nsika essien abasi edwok it is now my honor and privilege to invite the acting chief of administration at the headquarters Nigerian Air Force in person of Air Commodore Ibikunle Daramola for the citation. The special guest of honor, the executive governor of Akwaibom State, His Excellency Mr. Udom Emmanuel, the chief co-owner, the chief of the air staff, Air Vice Marshal Oladayo Amao, distinguished flying star, His Excellency the deputy governor of Akwaibom State, Mr. Moses Ekpo, and other state government officials here present, the representatives of the Honorable Minister of Defense, Chief of Defense Staff, and Service Chiefs here present, former Chief of Army Staff, former Chief of Naval Staff here present, officiating ministers and members of clergy, the wife of our dear late Air Marshal Nsikak Edwok, Dickness Mrs. Udwak Nsikak Edwok, and other members of the deceased family, branch chiefs from Defense and Nigerian Air Force Headquarters, Air Officers Commanding, Senior Military Officers, both serving and retired, permit me at this point to stand on the already established protocol. My duty this morning is to read the biography of a colossus who has passed on in the person of Air Marshal Nsikak Abasi, SCN Edward, 12th Chief of the Air Staff of the Nigerian Air Force. Air Marshal Edward was born and I will be reading an abridged version because it will take too much time to read the entire biography. Air Marshal Edward was born on, as the third child of nine into the family of late Chief Elder and Mrs. Dickness Akpan Essen Udwok in the small farming community of Mbakepe in the present Ibesiko Asutan local government area of Akwaibom State on the 11th of July, 1947. He had his primary education at the government school Mbak Ikodudo in the year 1952 and proceeded to attend the prestigious 
Lutheran High School, Obotidim, in 1962, where he was made the general prefect in the school in the final year and graduated with flying colors. After a brief stint in the Voice of Nigeria, Air Marshal Edward was enrolled into the Nigerian Air Force as a potential pilot on the 1st of August, 1968. This is about a year after the outbreak of the Civil War, when men of less courage would fail to enroll. He was one of the first indigents of a Kwaibom state to join the Nigerian Air Force. Air Marshal Edward proceeded to the Nigerian Air Force Primary Flying Training School, now known as the 401 Flying Training School in Kaduna, in the year 1970, where he undertook his primary flying training and thereafter proceeded to the basic flying training school where he had his basic flying training in 1971. As an outstanding student, late Air Marshal Edward emerged the best all round in both primary and basic flying and hauled home several awards available for the program. He was commissioned a second lieutenant in the Nigerian Air Force in 1971 and awarded pilot wings in June of the same year. Late Air Marshal Edward attended several professional and staff courses both in Nigeria and overseas to hone his career and leadership capabilities. These include advanced and tactical flying training courses between 1971 and 1973, aircraft accident investigation course in the United States of America between 1974 and 1975, MiG-21 aircraft fighter flying conversion course in the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, the then Union of Soviet Socialist Republic USSR in 1975. He had his advanced staff course in United Kingdom in 1976 and also attended junior and senior command and staff courses at the Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Jaji, Nigeria. Air Marshal Edward, a prolific flyer and fighter pilot, also did the MB-39 aircraft flying conversion course in Italy in 1983 L-39 Albatross aircraft flying conversion course in the then Czechoslovakia, now Czech Republic, in 1986. He attended the United States Air War course at the United States Air War College, United States of America, where he graduated as one of the best international students. As a combat pilot, late Air Marshal Edward flew several aircraft types in, the Niger in Nigeria and overseas. These include the L-39, L-29, MiG-15, MiG-17, MiG-21, and the MB-339. He also held several staff and command appointments in almost all the important units in the Nigerian Air Force. Permit me to mention just a few. He was a commander, primary flying school, now 401 Flying Training School, Kaduna, from 1987 to 1988. Commander, basic flying training school, now 403 Flying Training School, Kano, from 1984 to 1986. He was a directing staff at the prestigious Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Jaji, station commander at NAF bases in Makodi and Kainji, was also director of operations and at other time, director of plans at the headquarters Nigerian Air Force. Air Marshal Edward was Air Officer Commanding Training Command from 1992 to 1993 and a member of the Armed Forces Ruling Council. He was appointed Chief of the Air Staff in 1993, but his appointment was withdrawn due to service exigencies. He was subsequently 
appointed Air Officer Commanding Tactical Air Command in 1993 up to 1995 and was a member of the Provisional Ruling Council and a Minister of Aviation from 1995 to 1996. Late Air Marshal Edward was reappointed as the 12th Chief of the Air Staff from 1996 to 1999, becoming the only Nigerian in history to ever be appointed Chief of the Air Staff twice. In the course of his training, he was awarded several medals, just to mention a few, the National Service Medal, Republic Service Medal, Distinguished Flying Star, Past Staff Course with DAGA, Fellow of the War College, and Commander of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. These distinctions brought him honor by his name being in the register of world's dominant citizens. He was awarded Honorary Doctor of Public Administration from Cornerstone University, Hawaii, United States of America, and an Honorary Doctorate degree in Humanities from Cornerstone University and Seminary, Israel. It is pertinent to note that Air Marshal Edward was the first person in the then nine uh, Eastern states to attain the rank of Air Marshal and the second ever to reach the status of a three-star general. Air Marshal Nsika Kedwok also held some non-military appointments which include member governing council of the Bayero University Kano and the Nigerian Air Force representative on the National Boundaries Commission. He was also responsible for the sighting of the Air Force Comprehensive Secondary School Uyo here in Akwaibom, which has been rated as one of the very best public secondary schools in Nigeria. It is noted that late Air Marshal Nzika Kedwok was at the forefront of the creation of Akwaibom State in 1987 and the abrogation of the obnoxious onshore-offshore dichotomy in 1992. It is also on record that he procured and donated the first vehicle, computer sets, and numerous office equipment to Ibesiko, a Sultan local government area, as his personal contributions to the takeoff of the council. He was the brain behind the Etam substation, a major power booster project of the erstwhile National Electric Power Authority, NEPA, for Akwaibom State. The late Air Marshal also thought it very pertinent to assist in providing succor to brilliant but less privileged indigenous students by establishing the Insika Kabasi Edwok Special Education Foundation, NESEF, for which scholarships were awarded to deserving students at different educational levels from which well over 6,000 persons have benefited. He had compassion for the less privileged, the weak, the orphans, the widows and widowers, they all found succor from this man possessed with an unbridled philanthropic spirit. He was exceptionally passionate about children and would stop at nothing to assist them whenever opportunity beckoned on him. Religious and economic life. Late Air Marshal Edward was ordained as an elder of the Kwaibo Church now known as the United Evangelical Church in 1998, shortly before his retirement from the service, and was the chairman of its registered board of trustees until his death. After his retirement in 1999, Air Marshal Edward settled down to focus on God's word and works, 
remained apolitical, and was engaged in charitable works and established various businesses to support his family, the church, and create wealth for the community. Until his demise, he was the chairman, chief executive officer of Agro Ideas International Limited, the biggest established privately owned palm oil and palm kernel processing plant in Aquaibo State, and had agricultural plantations spread across the length and breadth of Aquaibo and Cross River States to cater for the meal. Air Marshal Edward was conscious of the need for the society to maintain good health and wellness. As an astute sportsman, he established the state-of-the-art ultra-fit wellness center in Uyo, which has continued to cater for the health and fitness needs of those who patronize it. He also established a state-of-the-art printing press, Frontiers Printing Press, as part of his investment in the state amongst other investments. Late Air Marshal Edward was also a member of numerous traditional and professional institutions within and outside the state. Prominent among them is Mbo Bara Ibibio. I hope I pronounced it well. Where he was the third patron until his demise. He was also patron of the Aquaibon Farmers Association, Sports Writers Association of Nigeria, Bible Society of Nigeria, and Luther Messengers, where he served as grand patron. Emma Shadolderok was also the international president and later chairman, board of trustees of the Lutheran High School, Obodidim Old Students Association. family life. Late elder Nsika Gabasi Edward was wedded to his first wife, late Dickness Mrs. Nkese Edward, in the year 1975, and the marriage was blessed with many children. After his demise, after the demise of his first wife in 2012, he married Dickness Mrs. Udwak N. Edward and remained happily married to her until his demise. He was a loving and caring father and husband. Final days. Late elder in Sikak, Edward, had battled with end-stage kidney failure about six months at the Ibom Specialist Hospital in Aquaibom State until he finally succumbed to the cold hands of death on the evening of 6th of January, 2021. He was aged 73. He fought a good fight and finished strong. All we can do today is to give thanks to God for a life well spent and give due accolades to a distinguished military officer, a fine gentleman, a well-bred scholar, a seasoned administrator, a philanthropist, a loving father, husband, and all-round jolly good fellow. He is survived by his wife, children, grandchildren, and a host of relatives. May the gentle soul of Air Marshal and Sika Kabasi, SN Edward, rest in peace in the bosom of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He was a good man. If nothing else, he was a good man. He was a godly man. He was a Christian. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Before we take the prayer for the Berit family, we'd like to invite the Galilee boy to step, please just step by, for a tribute song. At the same time, we'll ask, um, we'll ask a special, the United Choral Voices 
to stand by for special rendition. Please, we don't have time. So if you are presenting anything, just be on the queue so we can get through with this program shortly. Can we have the Galilee boy? Is he around? This is a lullaby, a celebration of life. It is a special dedication to the soldiers of the cross who have paid the price. From the Bible days, believers and martyrs down to the present day saints who refusing to put their hope in this world have instead gone ahead to fight the good fight of faith and who now sleep in the place of eternal rest. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Joy this morning. Yeah, oh, gracias. I can hear whooping in the skies and sweet angels in their throng in a blaze of glory. I can see a crown of faithfulness divine. Your judge, your head is not so torn. On that last day, so it's your time for rest to fight never again. Deo gracias, heaven. Is glad. Good night, sir. The Lord rest your soul in the name of Jesus. Thank you so very much. Amen. United Choral Voices, can you make it very brief? Very brief. Thank you.
very much. The Lord bless you and use this song to strengthen every one of us in Jesus' name. At this point, we'd like to invite one of the fathers of faith in a Kwaibom state and a former 
leader, our chairman of the Area Conference, I would like to gracefully invite Reverend Friday W. Omaren to pray for the family. And I'd like to plead with the family to please be upstanding so the prayers can get to you. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Please, I want to ask if your legs are strong enough to carry you, if you don't mind, I would like you to stand and join us as we want to pray for the bereaved family. Ari to a quibum stand bomb, getting on a memco no megu, Namgoasi. A bongacam. A frogue bongacam. Pray. May the good Lord hear our prayers and answer them accordingly in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for today that you have preserved our lives to witness the homegoing of your son, late Elder Nsikadwak. Father, we commit the family to you and pray, Lord, that you will keep them safe, console them, provide for them, guide them, and lead them. Help them also to know the God of heaven, who is the source of life, and the one who can give and provide. Father, we pray that you will deliver them from any harm and might have been introduced by the enemy through any human being to make thy life, their life bitter. We pray, Father, that you will deliver them from such bad intentions in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray also, Lord God of heaven, that you will give us somebody like Nsika Edward, who is now late, who will be loving and kind and uh, willing to help those in need. May the good Lord hear our prayers and answer according to his own good will, for we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Please be seated as we get to the next point. Um, General Thanksgiving, we'll be brisk about this. Uh, we have plates here and there. We're going to sing Rejoice. This is a day of rejoicing that the saint is gone home. Mm. So, can the band, can the priest team please lead us in General Thanksgiving? Give what you can. God will bless you as you do so. Um, he was a charitable man. So whatever you give will be used for that. We'd like to pray God will help you and bless you as you give. Can we get on the band, please? Father, to you, Lord, please. be okay. all the glory. Hold it. To please. you, Jesus, be all the honor. Please, you'll just move to the place where you find a basin or plate or whatever. Just move there, right in front of you. Put what you want to put. Dance a little dance, but don't dance backwards. Dance forward and get back to your seat so we can be through with this in a few minutes. Thank you. Father, to you, Daddy. Be all the glory. To you, Jesus. Be all the honor. Yeah, to you, to you. Be, be all the glory. And adoration for it. Yeah. To you, 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 to
And that was good. It's good to have the women, despite the occasion, and we thank God for them. Uh, some, we're just sitting like that. When the women stood up and began to rejoice, we joined with them. May God bless all of us in Jesus' name. At this point, we'd like to invite Reverend Abraham Akor to step forward and bless the offering and pray for blessing on the offering. Shall we pray? Our dear Most High God, we remain grateful unto you for your love, for your kindness towards us. We are what we are today by your grace. There's nothing we can offer other than what you have done for us. Now your children came out to offer their offerings unto you. We ask that you accept all of us so that you can equally accept our offerings, and in return, you will bless us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We have prayed with thanksgiving for accepting our offering today. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We are making progress. We will take the hymn, Congressional Hymn, number 165. Lead kindly light a miss and cycling gloom. What new song for Kwaima? Page 06 on the program, please. Shall we rise? What new song for Kwaima? Oh, 
Getting to the end of this program, I'd like to make a few announcements. Thereafter, Group Captain, okay, my friend uh, Raf will take the other announcements and do some introduction of the very eminent personalities at this burial. There will be interment immediately after this service at Mbarekwe, his country home. Then tomorrow there is a Thanksgiving service at uh, Mbarakwe, the home church. So we are invited to that Thanksgiving service, which will commence, I think, 9 o'clock or 10, depends on when it's fixed in the program. Welcome, and God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Please, can we appreciate the moderators of the service? Dr. Inobong Joshua and the people working with him. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we can give a better round of applause. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I stand here given permission by the church to recognize the dignitaries that have come from far and wide joining the people of Akwaibam, the Nigerian Air Force and the family to pay our last respect to the departed 12th Chief of the Air Staff of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Air Marshal, Elder Nsikarabasi, Essien Edward whose mortal remains are lying here at this Sibum Hall grounds, at this funeral service. We want to appreciate all the people that have come, and I want to please request, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that we do well to put our hands together for every single person that will be recognized at this event, if not for anything else, for taking the trouble to come join us here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have here leading the tributes on behalf of the government and the people of Akwaibom State. His Excellency, our governor, our number one citizen. Please put your hands together for Mr. Udum Emmanuel, governor of Akwaibom State, who is here with us. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. The deputy governor of Akwaibom State, Mr. Moses F. Ekwo MFR, is also here. Speaker of the Akwaibom State House of Assembly, the Right Honorable Anyakan Basi Mobami, please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. The Chief Judge of Akwaibom State, Honorable Justice Godwin Abraham, is also here. Can we please put our hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you. Okay. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 
High Vice Marshal Ibukule Daramola, who read the biography of the man lying here, had given us a preview of the very sterling service that this gentleman rendered to his country through the Nigerian Air Force in particular. And even after retirement in 1999, he continued to be of service to this country. And for all the work that he did, especially the one he did in the Nigerian Air Force, the entire complement of the Nigerian Air Force is here to pay their last respects to their 12th chief, leading them, the 21st chief of the Air Staff of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Air Vice Marshal Oladayo Amao is here. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Thank you very much. The Chief of Defense Staff is represented on this occasion by Rear Admiral Maurice Enor. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Chief of the Army Staff, represented on this occasion by Major General I.M. Jalu. Please give a round of applause to the gentleman. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you. The Chief of Naval Staff, is represented on this occasion by Rear Admiral Ayo Banjo. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Immediate pass, Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Iborete Ibas, is here in person. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Okay, man, United Edison. We recognize all the branch chiefs from the Defense and Services Headquarters, all the air officers commanding that are here, senior military officers serving and retired that are here. We welcome all of you and recognize all of you. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we learned today, a good number of us already knew, but we were reminded that the late Air Marshal Sikak Edward was the first from the former nine states of the then Eastern region to actually become a service chief and rise to the rank of three-star general. We've recognized all of the military officers that are here. There are too many, I would not want to list them. But please, I'm sure even they will not mind if I single out the military officer who is from the same local government area from the departed chief of the air staff. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen himself, the commander of the Army War College in Abuja, please celebrate Major General Solomon Udonwa, who is here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We recognize and welcome Nigerian Air Force Officers Wives Association that have come here. Please put your hands together for them, ladies and gentlemen. All former governors and deputy governors of Akwaibum that are here, we acknowledge your presence and we recognize you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the last military administrator of Akwaibum, Group Captain Eyekweye John Ebiye is here. And he told me that he became governor of Akwaibum through the instrumentality of Air Marshal Sikaredwa. He's here to pay respects to him. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my attention has just been drawn to the fact that the former chief of the Army Staff, Lieutenant General KTJ Minima, is here. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Thank you. The retired, but definitely not tired, chief of the Army Staff. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. We welcome all the members of the National Assembly that are here. We acknowledge them, senators and members of the House of Representatives. Thank you very much. We recognize the minister of the Niger Delta that is here, Senator Godfrey Lakwabio. Thank you very much. We welcome the justice of the Court of Appeal that is here. Please, we welcome Honorable Justice Ita Mbaba, Justice of the Court of Appeal. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Thank you. National Legal Advisor of the PDP, Barrister Emmanuel Enoidem, is also here. 
Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome him. Thank you. The Secretary of the Caretaker Committee, the National Caretaker Committee of the APC, Distinguished Senator John James Akpanodoidera is also here. Please put your hands together for him. We acknowledge the presence of Senior Special Assistant to the President of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Ita Enang, who has also joined us here. We welcome all the members of the Akwaibom State House of Assembly that are here. Secretary to Government, Chief of Staff, Head of Civil Service, the entire Akwaibom State Executive Council. As a matter of fact, the entire government of Akwaibom State, across all the levels. Please pardon me, time will fail me to list one after the other all of the people that are here. Please, can we put our hands together for them? Thank you very much. We recognize and welcome the Chairman of Conference of the United Evangelical Church, the Reverend Samuel Udeme Eburiba, who is here. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. We recognize, seated to his immediate right, the Chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Kwaibom State, the Reverend Dr. Ndwese Kwere. Please put your hands together for them. Through them, we recognize all the clergymen that have come to be part of this event. We welcome all of you, and we pray the good Lord to bless each and every one of you. But permit me, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to single out, um, because we don't get to see them every day, the gentleman who gave the very brief sermon, but very powerful sermon here at this event, the Director of Chaplain Services of the Nigerian Air Force, Chaplain Services Protestant. Please celebrate Group Captain, Reverend Dr. J.D. Gani, who gave us the message. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. We recognize all the royal fathers that are here. I'm aware that the paramount ruler of Ibesikbo, Asutan, local government area, is here. The home local government area of the departed chief of the air staff retired. Through him, we acknowledge the presence of all the royal fathers, the clan heads, the village heads, the family heads, all of those from the traditional institution. We welcome you. And we are happy that you are able to join us here. Akwaibom professionals in the diaspora who have come from outside the state to share in this moment of honor for one of our very best and one of our very brightest. On their behalf, let me recognize the immediate past vice chairman of the ExxonMobil companies in Nigeria, Mr. Udom Inoyo. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. The president, international president, of Mbowo Mparawa Ibibio, where the late Air Marshal was the Grand Patron, Obong Patrick Udofia, and the entire Mbowo Mparawa Ibibio that have come here. Thank you very much. Through them, we recognize all other social cultural organizations that have come. We recognize the Lutheran High School, Oboridum Old Students Association, who have come to share this moment of one of their best and one of their brightest. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have here friends, associates, well-wishers. We have here beneficiaries of the benevolence of the gentleman lying down here. We have the people of Akwaibum and beyond who have come from the band to the choir, to those providing service, the cameramen, the photographers, those who are doing the live stream on the internet, the security personnel, the drivers, Every single person who is contributing to the beauty that this event has become. Please put your hands together for yourselves, whatever it is that you are, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am very sure that not all of us will have the opportunity of walking up to the members of this family to personally express our condolences. And so I will request, as a last time for all of us, to show our solidarity with the bereaved family by putting our hands together for the members of the bereaved family. Please put your hands together for them. It may be the only thing that you can do for them at this particular point. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure always to have all of you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, join us at this event. May I at this point invite the Director of Music of the Nigerian Air Force Group Captain, Ernest Bassi, to please kindly come to this microphone and take the next item on the program. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.
Thank you, Ralph. Before I announce the next pro item, um, I'm directed to announce that the aircraft to convey VIPs that came from Abuja and senior officers will be ready for departure by 1,500 hours. Those concerned are to please be at the airport at the right time to board. Thank you. May I now most respectfully invite a man whom the leadership of the Nigerian Air Force was trusted upon his shoulders some weeks ago, talking about the incumbent chief of the Air Staff, Air Vice Marshal Oladayo Amao, distinguished flying star, to kindly step forward and uh, deliver his address. The Chief of the Air Staff, sir. May I request a round of applause for the Chief of the Air Staff? Thank you. The special guest of honor, the chief mourner, and my co mourner, the executive governor of Aquabon State, His Excellency Mr. Udom Emmanuel, the deputy governor of Aquabon State, Mr. Moses Epo, the speaker of Aquabon State House of Assembly as well as the distinguished and honorable members of national and state House of Assembly here present, the judge of the Chief Judge of Aquaban State, another judicial officer here present, the Honorable Minister of Niger Data, representative of the Minister of Defense, representative of the Chief of Defense Staff, and the service chiefs, members of Aquaibon State Executive Council, your royal INSs, the officiating ministers and other clergymen present here, the, my lord spiritual and temporal, the wife of late Air Marshal Insika Edward, Dickiness Mrs. Uduak Insika Edward and other members of the deceased family. Former service chiefs, brand chiefs from defense and service headquarters, air officer commanding, senior military officers both serving and retired, the president and members of Mbo, Mbarakwa, Ibibio, and other socio-cultural organizations, Members of Nigerian Air Force Officers Wives Association here present, distinguished invited guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. It, with gratitude to God, I warmly welcome you all to this funeral ceremony of our beloved, very senior colleague, an elder statesman, brother, father, uncle, and mentor, E. Masha Isikak Abasi Essien Akwan Edwok. Our Amebu E. Masha was a man of valor, integrity, and a great achiever with unprecedented strive for success. He was a mentor to so many of us, both serving and retired. He was one of the best hands in the Nigerian Air Force, who steered the tide of the service towards successes recorded these past years. He was one of the best that changed the landscape of the service and left the scene like a hero while the ovation was still reverberating. As the 12th Chief of Air Staff, he contributed significantly to the development of Nigerian Air Force. 
He was my personal mentor, a great fighter pilot whose transformation approach to leadership tremendously impacted on the development of the Air Force we have today. He was an accommodating air marshal whose astuteness, diligence, and dedication during his sojourn on earth made significant and considerable impact in our lives and in the Nigerian Air Force as a whole. While serving as the Chief of Air Staff, late Air Marshal Nsikak Edok brought his wealth of operational and administrative experiences to bear in steering the affairs of the Nigerian Air Force. The feat ultimately led to the outstanding transformation of the service we are enjoying today. He was renowned as the first Chief of the Air Staff to procure an attack helicopter which enhanced the offensive capability and operational efficiencies of Nigerian Air Force. His administration was also the first to explore the possibility of carrying out periodic depot maintenance of Nigerian Air Force aircraft within the country which was conducted on two Nigerian Air Force C-130 aircraft. A warrior that he was, M. Marshal Edward saw to the successful completion of the national peace enforcement effort in Liberia and Syria alone. If, even in retirement, the late former chief of Estab continued to make invaluable contributions to the development of the service with significant input in the restructuring of the Nigerian Air Force to make it more effective in dealing with the contemporary security challenges facing the, the country. His contribution to the Nigerian Air Force operations in pursuit of national security and stability will forever be remembered. The shocking news of the Air Marshal of Air Marshal Nsika Edwards' death which occurred on 6th January 2021, is a solemn reminder to each of us on the inevitability of death. Today is yet a day of sober feelings and remind us of the transcendent nature of human life. Nonetheless, we still celebrate the well-lived and impactful life of our amiable Air Masha. It is indeed a glorious exit. The demise of this confident, courageous, and professional Air Masha will spur us to rededicate ourselves to God and in the service of our dear nation. Air Masha in Sikaka Ndok will surely be missed for his timely and professional contribution, not just to the Air Force and Aquaban State alone, but to the entire nation. In honor of his sacrifice to the services and the nation, and in recognition of his extraordinary crave for fitness, the Ultra Fit Gymnasium Center at the Nigerian Air Force Base, Yula, was commissioned and named after Air Marshal Insikak Edward Kretaya to immortalize him. To his immediate family, the executive governor, and the good people of Aquaibon State, we indeed share in your grief and reassure you of our continuous support in these trying times. Just about two weeks ago, the Executive Governor of Aquaibon State, Mr. Udon Omanuel, and the good people of Aquaibon State bid, bid farewell and lay to rest the first indigenous military administrators of this state, a senior officer, late Air Commodore in Nungesit, Ikanga, retired. These events are huge losses 
to the Nigerian Air Force, Accra Ibon State, and indeed the entire nation. We are, however, very proud and highly honored to have worked with your amiable husbands, father, and illustrious son. This is a time for sober reflection as we pray for the eternal repose of the gentle souls of Air Masha in Sikak Edward. It will be greatly missed, but fondly remembered by all those who has left, he has left behind. I am aware that so many people would have loved to be here this morning to pay this, their last respects. However, in line with the NCDC COVID-19 protocol for barriers during this period, attendance and social gathering restrictions have been observed. Today, as the air marshal goes to his final resting place, it is our prayer that the Lord will be with him and grant, him so, grant his soul eternal repose. Finally, I would like to express my profound gratitude to His Excellency, the Executive Go Governor of Aquaibon State, Mr. Udom Emmanuel, for his support towards the planning and execution of befitting various ceremonies for the two Air Force Marshals. May time is the searing pain of today as I pray for the Lord Almighty to comfort Nsikak Edward family, the good people of Aquabon State, and the entire Nigerian Air Force family. Thank you very much, and may God grant the soul of Air Masha Nsikak Edward eternal rest. Speech there by the 21st Chief of the Air Staff, Air Vice Marshal Olada Amao, Distinguished Flying Star, and he has proceeded to personally condole with and exchange pleasantries with the widow of the departed and other members of the family. We thank the Nigerian Air Force under his leadership for the honor which has been bestowed on this gentleman. We thank them for everything that has been done to give one of the us and one of us this befitting farewell. We thank you, sir. We wish you the very best in your tenure as Chief of the Air Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, please put your hands together for Air Vice Marshal Oladeo Amao, Distinguished Flying Star, Chief of the Air Staff. Thank you very much, sir. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this point, after having listened to the Chief of the Air Staff, it is time to listen to what the government and the people of Akwaibom State are going to say through their governor, their number one citizen, His Excellency, the governor of Akwaibom State, Mr. Udum Imanu, who is going to address this gathering at this time. Your Excellency, please. Okay, thank you. Christians, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. United Evangelical Church, praise the Lord. Women, praise the Lord. Mbong Barawai Vivio, praise the Lord. Please, shall we be seated? Your Excellency, Your Excellency, the Deputy, Deputy Governor, Governor, Mr. Speaker, Speaker Kwaibom House of Assembly, my Lord, the Chief Judge of Akwaibom State, the Chief of Air Staff, let me pause and recognize our fathers in faith across all denominations, 
Let me also recognize the former governors of our state. Group Captain Ebiye retired this year. I'm told my immediate predecessor is also here, Chief Gospel of Barokpavio. Let me also recognize all the senior military officers, representative of the Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, immediate past Chief of Naval Staff, our brother. Let me also recognize the former Chief of Army Staff, our brother, also from the Niger Delta. Representative of the Governor of Abia State Island is here. The political structure led by different political parties, especially PDP, led by the National Legal Advisor. Let me recognize the single senators, members of the National Assembly. Let me recognize especially the social cultural groups, especially the Mbom Parawai Bibi, our traditional fathers. Permit me not to prolong the protocol already established by RAF while I pay special recognition once again to the entire hierarchy of the church. I think today is another not too exciting day for me because within a short period of time, this state will have lost so many, even if it's one, even if it's two. When you look at the substance, you categorize it. It's like water. Water measured in a cup and water measured in a river. All is some water. So in the same way, I feel the pains today, especially with the recent occurrences. Today's when I just look at the vacuum, I have a picture that I took not quite long ago that Major General Akban sat a Commodore, you know, as in Canada, retired, let, sat. And A Marshal, Sika Adok, now let, sat, three of them, in a row. I just look at, and something just struck me on the emptiness of life. And I wonder when people just go about as if they are gods on earth without recognizing the emptiness of life. I also want to use this opportunity to acknowledge. When I looked at the program, I saw what the Chairman Board of Trustees wrote to the church. I believe this is a message, because if you go to that page, page, I think 15, they say a message from dad to the world. And to the church, it says war, fight, I'm better than you, etc. For how long? For how long? Is God a particular person or a family? Hypocrisy in all? Save God purely or leave. God is not forcing anyone. But know that he sees all and rewards all accordingly. I fought to keep us together. But did I succeed? I believe that question is what the church will answer. It's left for God to judge. Was it on selfish grounds? God knows. It's on that note, I give my special tribute and special oration on the occasion of this great man. Nigeria had lost a gem. Air Force have lost a colossus. Akwaibo, we've lost a statesman. I want to believe the church, they've lost a fighter. Ibibio, nation, you've lost a great son. The family, you've lost a father. And to the children, and to the wife, you've lost a husband, a father, a grandfather, and an uncle. So I stand here today, filled with a deep sense of loss and grief on behalf of the government and good people of Akwaibom State to bid farewell to a quintessential Nigerian patriot, a trailblazer, an epitome of courage and bravery, a decorated Air Force officer, and above all, a husband, a father, and a devout Christian, the late Air Marshal Nsika Edward, CFR, DSS, MSS, FSS, 
USAWC, PSC Daga. The late Emma Shaledwok was one of our ambassadors who epitomized the Aquaibum defining characteristics of duty, honesty, transparency, integrity, love for country, and God. And he brought these inspiring ideals to bear. In the course of his illustrious career with the Nigerian Air Force, where he rose to the pinnacle of that noble service as the 12th Chief of Air Staff, the first Aquaibomite to ever occupy that exalted position. Before us today, in the flood draped coven that we have before us, ladies and gentlemen, was a man who defined the true essence of the word loyalty. Not many people would have been possessed of such level of stoic resignation and a deep sense of equanimity as he did when he was first announced the chief of air staff, only to have it reversed a few days later. Yet, he did not display any sense of bitterness. The late A. Marshall Edward was a man of deep faith, an elder in the United Evangelical Church, also known as Koibo Church. He believed in the immutable power of prayer. As a deep believer, he knew instinctively that who God chooses, he qualifies. And when the right time came, God elevated him to the position of the chief of air staff. It is on record that during his tenure, he brought about enduring innovations and inspired many of his subordinates who today are critical members of the lean, agile, and fantastic fighting force that the Nigerian Air Force has come to be known for and admired. Needless for me to repeat all the things he has done. They talked about the substations at Afarobe. They've talked about Air Force secondary schools and a lot more for Nigerian Air Force and for Nigeria in general. In retirement, the late Air Marshal Edward chose to relocate to his home state, and he was a very dependable statesman. He did not fail at any point in time to call on me or send a message to me that we should meet and resolve critical issues. He used to speak to me very often. I remember about three years ago, when he had issues with his health, the then chief of air staff came together with me. We did everything possible. In fact, we were on our way outside the country when we had to stop by Lagos and took him to a hospital, a private hospital in Lagos. We prayed one prayer to God that if his time was not yet up, let God spare his life. God spared his life. He lived until January this year. Today, I know a voice of reason and moderation whose counsel was sought was always ready and on point. I will not fail to recognize his contribution to the stability and recognition of the Ifumi Bumi Bibio. Today, our late Air Marshal, having earned many flying miles and weathered the turbulence, has made a final landing and the applause is thunderous and the appreciation immense and rightly so in heaven. Let me end this oration by quoting just a line from the 19th century Unitarian preacher and writer, me not just savage. I quote, the brave die never. Though they sleep in dust, their courage nerves a thousand living men, unquote. Though A. Marshall Edward is no longer with us, the courage he exhibited, the life of honesty, loyalty, and patriotism he lived by will continue to nerve a thousand living men, especially those in the Nigerian Air Force, and indeed, the larger Nigerian sociopolitical space. I also want to use this opportunity to appeal to the Chief of Air Staff. After the present crop of officers that you have in the Nigerian Air Force, that you have just one or two of our Bible might, I want to make an appeal that every year, every time you advertise, our people apply in numbers. Please try, even if you want to follow the federal character, let's try and see. Because the last time I applied, hundreds of Aquabomites applied. Only nine were given opportunity to serve in the Nigerian Air Force. I believe we will use this occasion to solicit for larger percentage 
of our people in different armed forces. I'm also happy the Chief of Defense Staff is ably represented and the Chief of Army Staff. And um, I think the Chief of Naval Staff is also well represented here. As we say it here in our local dialect, a zero. Good night, our air marshal. Good night, our great patriot. Good night, the great son of Ibibio Nation. May your soul find repose in the bosom of our Lord and Creator. Thank you and God bless you. His Excellency, the Governor of Akwaibum State, Mr. Udum Emmanuel, as he proceeds to exchange pleasantries and present his condolences personally to the widow and other members of the family of the late former chief of the air staff of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Please, after now, we'll begin the process of winding down on this service. Please and please, it is important that we announce that after the benediction, the officers who were Paul bearers will march forward and there will be a brief ceremony of taking the body out. We are please expected to remain until the mortal remains have been taken out of this arena, after which we can now leave. There will be a brief military ceremony and then of course, after that, when the casket has been put in the hairs, we will now depart. Thank you very much. His Excellency the Governor, as is his tradition, after condoling with members of the family, we'll move straight to where the clergymen are seated. And of course, to exchange pleasantries with them. This is something, if you know His Excellency very well, that is customary with him at events of this nature. He greets the Chairman of Conference, the Khan Chairman, the Secretary of Conference, and of course, the Chaplain Protestant of the Nigerian Air Force, who preached also. He greets all of them, the Reverend F. W. Moran, and of course, all the clergymen of the United Evangelical Church and all the other clergymen that are here. He exchanges pleasantries with the members of the Board of Trustees of the Church. And um, he will, at this point, after that, begin to make his way back to his seat. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency the Governor, as he returns to his seat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, please, after the benediction, we'll remain where we are. Do not get into the arena. There will be a brief ceremony of taking this casket out. It is important that we remain where we are and do not interfere with that ceremony. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, there are a good number of very important persons attending this event. His Excellency is taking time out to greet them one after the other on his way back to his seat. Something which is traditionally and customary with him. We commend, of course, the entire people who have come to be part of this event. Welcome all of you, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. We will hand over back to the moderator of the service, Dr. Enobong Joshua and his team, who will take us through the final parts of this funeral service. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, if you don't mind, can we all stand for the final prayers? But before then, can we sing to God be the glory? Just one verse, and then the chairman of conference, Reverend Dr. Samuel Ebugiba will lead in the prayers and the benediction. <laughs> to God be the glory, great things he has done, so lovely the world of
Let's pray together. Oh Lord, our God, we give you praise, we give you glory for being with us in this program. Thank you for leading us to the end of this segment very successfully. Be thou glorified. From here, we will go for the interment. Lord, we pray that your presence will continually be with us. At the end of it all, we all will go back to our respective destinations. Take us whom safely. Lord God Almighty, remain with the bereaved family. Continue to uphold them, strengthen them, even at such a time as this. Blessed be your name, for we are confident that he who brought us here safely will also take us back in safety. Now we ask that with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. The Paul Bearers will now proceed to recover the remains of the late Air Marshal Nsikak Edwok to the heads for advance to the venue of interment. While the Paul Bearers prepare to advance the remains to the heirs, may I respectfully announce that only members of the immediate family, the clergy, and other very close VIPs are invited to attend the interment. Once again, we want to thank you most sincerely for sharing with Aquaibomites and the Nigerian Air Force family in this very awesome moment of departure of a Colossus and his journey. The Paul Bearers. The band. And indeed, it's been a life well spent, a life of great impact, a life of a personality that is well admired, going home to his crater in a very highly respected manner. 
We want to thank you all, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, for attending this very important and solemn occasion. Wish you a safe journey back to your respective destination. I've been yours truly, Group Captain Annie Barsi, and I've been working with Ralph Edem. Thank you once again, and God bless. Aha! Yeah. Nice Yeah! Everybody look good, look good.